Hello and welcome everybody to main show of the TRC podcast number 12. Look at that. All right, yeah. Well, we're no, getting we, up there. We're, we're getting up there. Oh, I, don't, I don't even remember hitting the double digits, but I'm excited. That's, it's that's just great. all a blur. It feels it really like we've is. only been doing this a couple days. Yeah. yeah. A couple weeks, I should say. So. It's, it's still fresh in our minds, the yeah. beginning. Yeah, it's, it's a good time. Not, anyway, yeah. I've got Anthony. Hello, guys. What's going on? And I got Levi. Hey, hey. You, be, you, you probably know these people. Yeah, just a little bit. bit. But for those of us... I'm new, actually. For those of you <laughs> who are just joining us, thank before. you. And, uh, yeah, we're going to get right into it. I mean, right now we're kind of feeling it's, the pressure. We're today, feeling, yeah. Uh, busy. Real, so real push. we got three days left before we roll out to SEMA. Yep. We're leaving Friday morning. Um, today is Monday as we're recording this. Uh, it's about 2 in the afternoon. Yep. And uh, needless to say... I made a massive list this morning of stuff that needed to be checked off, and the only thing that got checked off was <laughs> your dad took the Escalade to go get the oil changed. Oh, good. So, so at least we won't be having that We have that probably 50 <laughs> items on the list yeah. that we need checked off, and yeah, we're, we're about... 49 have still left to go. Yeah. <laughs> it's I think a lot of them are It's a little stressful. A lot of them are quick though. though like uh we got the Velcro on the tables today so that was done. That's checked um, off the list. So that I looks good. That checked off. Uh we did get all the towels pulled that were mm -hmm. taken down but I need yep. to edit the pile a little bit. Your dad came up with a list of stuff that he wants to take. So yeah. uh, That's a lot of towels. So I got to go through and just make sure. So that took me about an hour to pull all those towels and make sure they were right because he wants only the best of the best. And what he means uh, by all that is that we are going to have some display so you can actually touch and feel yeah, the towels. Yeah, we'll be able to touch and feel yeah. everything. If you happen to be down at SEMA, come by our booth. Yeah. If there's a bluff hole that you want touch to touch towels. or a mink that you haven't touched yet, we're going to have it. So It's, it's a special... Feely. Like you, maybe you, you feel towels feel the, and you think yeah. you know what a good towel is. Wait till you feel some of these. Oh. Yeah. So maybe you wanted to touch twist and shout. Maybe you don't know the difference between a 245 and a 420. There's a um, lot of questions about that. We'll but when you feel that. it, you understand. So you can touch and so. feel and see because really that's what we're all about is touchy feely. Feel. <laughs> <laughs> touch <and feel>. Way <laughs> to make that take touch a turn. All right. <laughs> but we've got a lot to do. <clears throat> I took Anthony. We went and got his pants. Uh, yeah. We've got a uniform we're wearing, so it's been hard trying Let's to Let's be find. real. It's kind of been an ordeal with these it's pants. It's been kind of hilarious. <laughs> Let's so, just say that pants don't fit everybody the same. Not all pants are created equal. There right? are different body so, types out there, yeah. and uh, pants do not well, act as a one-size-fits-all situation. The to make everybody look good, and uh, appease everybody's body type. Some of us need more help and, than others. Uh, and at the same time, you know, originally we wanted to do slacks. Yeah. But yeah. then with our shirt ideas, we didn't think that was the best uh, bet. So no, we, we got picked really a, nice shirts. So we went more towards a tactical kind of dress tactical. slack so to speak yeah. well they're they're um, comfortable they're and they're slacktical like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know how to yeah they're more of a sporty <clears throat> trouser yeah um male yoga pants <laughs> not that far we're not that well, tight no see that but, was the problem though yeah. that was when we we started putting them on and realizing oh these sizes are suggestions that i yeah, don't know basically if we, really we were having to buy four sizes <laughs> larger to get the size that fit us the right way so yeah let's, make not, it let's, not, let's not beat around the bush i put on the pants all right <laughs> and they were skin tight all right uh, yeah he My, had his, I, he had his yoga <laughs> pants on like and he was tight. ready to go they i look like peter pan he you looked know, like he was ready to do like a Shakespeare production. Yeah. He was just like, <laughs> like, like I look like my legs look very womanly, and I, it's just because I, yeah, I have some, I have a little bit of muscle in my legs, but these pants just made it look like I had some thunder. It thighs. was really great. It was really great. <laughs> it was. Uh, but then Dane put on his, and they fit fine. Yeah, I, I put like, on mine, and they fit fine. So, so I guess, and I'm a big guy, so it's like, I don't know. All right, it just works out. I got smaller legs or something. Yeah, whatever. But, got some meaty legs. <laughs> Everybody so. got their pants. So we got our pants. So that's good. So that's enough about, about that. our bodies. Thanks. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So needless to say, we've got a massive checklist of stuff, and at the same time, we're still doing day to day business here. So yeah, um, it's a little insane. And we got we got you know a lot of the heavy hitters coming down with us to SEMA, so we really got to make sure the shop is running and stuff because John John never leaves this building, yeah. and he's coming to SEMA. Yeah, yeah. So. so. That's going to be a little scary. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> he's, have... he's the behind-the-scenes celebrity everybody should know. Yeah. yeah. So there's there's a lot we have to do, yeah, just around here, around, around the building, just to kind of get everything prepped and set up. Like, it, it doesn't, I guess, how do I say this? It doesn't help 
that we're all procrastinators yeah. pretty much in well, general. Well, and it's hard when you go like, <laughs> okay, let's get this done, and then hold on a second, everybody, come over here and look at this. Here's an idea I have <laughs> yeah. that we can do, yeah. and I'm like, we don't have time for this. Minute. Idea. Like, yeah. that's one more thing to add to the list. Let me get. I mean, these okay, let's be here. fair. We are procrastinators, but we're also not slackers. We work hard, so no, we I do mean, work. Yeah. It's just but a we're just very of, creative. We, and we so find we'll, lots of other things yeah. to preoccupy we'll us. We come up with a lot of extra work that may or may not be necessary right but uh, this this is necessary we got well it. It, yeah it was one of those where i was like do we really need to go record the podcast right now like can we just get like, and i push hard for i just want to check i want it to come out the same time yeah. every week no, that's and uh, to all of you that that loyally listen we appreciate it yeah because we wouldn't be doing this if you weren't listening yeah. no so those numbers are going up so yeah. thank you for so. everybody telling a friend or family member we but, appreciate yeah. that but in in my head i run things like a boss so i look at stuff yeah. and go we've got to get why is this not done why is this not done why do we have this why am i why are my hands tied that i have to wait on somebody to do these things so and then i know i like, say no let's go do the podcast yeah. now <laughs> and i so i like to check off stuff so i was glad we got yep. the tables done yeah they look great, where they need to go by the way uh so that's set because that's mm-hmm. where all our towels are going. So our booth for our first year out, I think it looks pretty good. I think it looks pretty good for what we put into it. Because you see a lot of so. places, they'll they'll just like throw a huge check at some company to like put it together for them. We piecemealed it together. Yeah, from we like literally a lot of odds did. And ends, and it looks like a cohesive thing. Yep. I, good job, guys. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm hoping bag. you guys are going to yeah. like it. I think mm-hmm. it's going to be great. I am sorry for yawning. So, yeah. oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's just one of those days. All right. We're, we're going to have a long week, though. We really we really <laughs> so, are. Like, it's only Monday, and I'm sitting here like, we're all like, yeah, high hopes. Mm-hmm. It's Monday, right? We're gonna No, get Friday's going to be here, and, and we're going to oh. be standing in, like, wells well, going well, like, yeah. Well, the well, day's well, almost, I mean, we're, we're almost, it's already 2.30. We got two, two two and a half hours left play before everybody leaves, and then... Then we, it's yeah. gonna be Tuesday. Yeah, my wife's like, "You're more welcome to stay late." So yeah. I'm like, "Ah, yeah." Because tomorrow, Augie's getting a CGM installed, eight thirty in the is. morning. Ooh. That's the exciting so part. I'm gonna right? go do that. So day. yeah, he gets his constant glucose monitor installed. Oh. Uh, How's he feel about that? Does he know what that he is? He knows, and how that but he works? knows he's getting a toy for it. So oh, he's okay. kind of more excited for the toy. I got. But you. we will you see once we get him get a there. pretty cool toy. Yeah, well, he already got. He got a Groot truck. Mm. Oh wow! So a Groot truck that expands to carry that's, all his Hot Wheel cars on. That's so it's pretty Groot cool. from Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. I was gonna say, so is it Groot in truck form or yes. like yeah. okay? It's Groot in Marketing. car carrier <clears throat> form. Yeah. Yep. And he's got a little spot on top so you can actually get the rocket Hot Wheels and put oh, the rocket Hot Wheels okay. on the roof of the Groot truck. It's kind of cute. That's so sweet. he can sit on his shoulder, <laughs> kind of thing. I'm um, Groot. Yeah, <laughs> but we watched Guardians of the Galaxy this weekend for the kids, and uh, Augie was so excited that he <laughs> could tell everybody that he watched Guardians of the Galaxy all the way through, because usually they only watch parts of movies, mm-hmm. like they'll watch 20 minutes here, 30 minutes there, that's kind of how my wife and I dictate what they watch, <laughs> yeah. you know, but this time he got to watch Guardians of the Galaxy all the way through, oh and my. he's like been telling the world, um, <laughs> anybody hey, walked in the door this weekend, anything like that, it was like, I got to watch Guardians of the Galaxy all, all the, way, the through. way through. Yeah, he was pretty proud of himself. So, <laughs> yeah. but a big deal. So it'll be nice. This way, we can always constantly check his what his glucose is doing by our phone. It'll be Bluetooth enabled, and mm-hmm. these days everything wild. has an app for your phone. Yeah. It's gonna be pretty insane. So, um, pretty excited about that because uh, he had a crazy high low weekend. Mm. Yeah, which was not fun. So, but during that high low weekend, I was surfing Facebook. Yeah, and well. <laughs> what some dude just did this live video feed of him working on a car, and I was like, what in the world? <laughs> yeah. And it got quite a number of views. Well, Anthony yeah. texted me over the weekend and asked, he goes, what do you think? I'm working on this car. Should I like? Should I just take some pictures and share that on the, the Rag Company page? Or I got the login on the Rag Company on my phone now. What if I just did a live video? Go for it. Yeah, yeah so I was stoked. He did. And it was great. And he actually had some cool little insights into the car that – Probably a lot of people have no idea about yeah. the the paint and the yeah. quality of the materials and stuff like that. Just you know, stuff you, you wouldn't necessarily know unless you've had one up close, which few people have. So it was cool. It was neat to see. So if you didn't find it, go to the Rag Company uh, page. 
on Facebook and check out Anthony's video. Yeah. So sounds, we'll tell sounds, us about sounds, it. Sounds like he had a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, I bet he did. <laughs> well, you know what? Oh, wait, he's so, here. Oh, my God, he's here. Okay. Oh, Why doesn't he tell me. us about his uh, I was trying to lead him into that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, I sledgehammered it. Well, so. It's all right. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, that's what I did this weekend. So similar to the other cars I've been doing for, like, the past several weeks, as you guys know, have you've heard every week, I've been detailing my little side projects. <laughs> Watch um, the 500K detail. So, it's yeah, a fun video. 500K detail on our YouTube channel. But we, so I've been doing those GT350s, those identical ones, and uh, the owner uh, finally wanted <clears> me to <throat> knock out that Ford GT before he put it into storage because he's actually going to be going to uh, the Mika Auto auction, I think, next this ne- within this next month and going up there. And I don't I don't know if he's bringing the GT with him or if he's just going to kind of wheel and deal on the side and then mention to people that he has one. But uh, he said that he wanted it to go in storage and he wanted it to be perfect for any potential buyers that may fly here or may want to see it around town or something like that. So for Carla um, Nice, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. people flying up to check. Yeah. Out. Yeah. And he, he asked me, I'm like, I'm like, oh, <clears> man, what a bad weekend. because <laughs> It's the weekend <laughs> before SEMA. This is like my last free couple of free days. But I, you know, I. I, I wanted to do it because I had been looking forward to detailing this car. And so um, basically, yeah, it's a 2006 Ford GT um, Heritage livery. Um, it's it's a good so looking. It's the Golf livery. Yeah, the Golf, yeah, the Golf livery. So, yeah, that wasn't just something you could ask the factory to do. Those were special editions. So if you see one with the Golf livery, unless somebody wrapped it, it's for yeah. real. It's so, uh, painted in the factory. It's, yeah. So it's a it's a fifteen thousand dollar option from the fa- from the factory if if you choose just to have that paint job. And so, um, he told me all this before I really jumped into it. And it was really funny because before I even started this project, uh, Barrett Jackson was actually on the day before. You got and, a lot of people leaving a and, comment saying. That. And there was uh, there was the <clears throat> Barrett Jackson auto auctions that went through, and there was a Ford GT that that rolled through. And that particular one, it was covered in stickers, had some painted wheels on it. It looked like it had been raced. And then it also had um, a pretty, I think not a high amount of miles, but it had some miles on it. And I think the auction, when I saw it, at least somebody sent me a screenshot, it was at 350000 for the cost of it. So right when I started looking over this car that I was You remember those doing, were 150 new. Yeah. So <laughs> I started looking over the car that I was about to do, and this car is immaculate there's no stickers there's no nothing on it and it only has 1000 miles it's a so clean i can only imagine how much yeah. this particular car i was working on is is worth so um kind of my during my typical inspection of the car before i really even got started on anything started looking around for little odds and ends and then i started washing the car and did a rinseless wash on it um in the garage and that's when i noticed when i was wiping that you know the difference between the paint and then the difference between um, there, there's a vinyl all over the car and so I can I can tell just from taking the towel and wiping over you know the texture was different so I knew that I was kind of working with a lot of vinyl and I was working with two different types of paint but I didn't know for sure what it was until I started polishing it and then come to find out that the orange stripe in the middle of the car is single stage paint and then the blue on the outside has clear coat over it <laughs> and everything is tied in together with literally black vinyl stripes, pinstripes, pinstriping, basically. little black. And that, that's what it is. It's not painted. It's pinstriping. And if you get up close and really look, this is where this isn't, I'm not trying to say that it was, it's a bad paint job. I'm just trying to say that, that this is something that you probably should notice if you're paying $15,000. It's the way it came from the factory. But it's when you look way really is. close, you can actually see <clears throat> the ridge where the blue meets the orange. So basically, mm-hmm. the blue side is higher than the orange side because the blue has the additional layer of clear coat. But then you see this black vinyl strip going across that edge, and you can see one side is noticeably higher than the other. So they put this black vinyl on there to kind of... It's how they disguise Kind the, of disguise it yeah, a little bit. Yeah. And so... It also puts but, a little protection so that that clear doesn't necessarily get like fingernail picked. Yeah, you know, yeah, from whatever. It, very true. But the only thing that I guess what bothered me a little bit about it was I started thinking about. It. Of course, I'm in the zone polishing. I'm in the zone detailing, and I wasn't listening to music at the time. So I just start kind of thinking about what I'm doing and start thinking about this car and kind of you know what they put into it when they were building it in the factory. And part of me was just like. They put vinyl on a, a good quarter of this entire car. Vinyl is not a lifelong thing. Vinyl no. will eventually wear off. It will peel up. <clears throat> it will, you know, and I'm thinking for how much this car costs 
and how much this particular paint job is worth, this vinyl is not going to last forever. <laughs> this is going to have to get redone. If this was a daily driver, if this was seen in a lot of different elements, that vinyl would peel off extremely easy. I'm talking, it's sure. just pinstriping. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's like if you were to catch that with the edge of a towel, it would peel yeah. up, you know, try to peel it back down. It's put it back. It's not going to stick properly. Now you have to replace that. And then you have to find a place or a shop that you would trust to replace this. To the right person, stripes. you might just want to get somebody to actually paint black pin stripes. Yeah, I would yeah. Same. If it was no, mine I and I had totally that, I would just that. peel all those off and have And then painted. get somebody to clear over the orange or something. I, I don't know. Well, it's I, kind well, of a that, question of whether or not you should It's kind of odd why that. they didn't do... I, I, I have no idea. And I didn't know until I started polishing. Yeah. And then I'm using an orange pad, but then I went to spray some O&R onto um, the surface to, just to help with my wipe Um, because I was using the last cut compound again on this car and to help with my wipe just to make it smoother. And right when I sprayed the O&R on the surface of where the compound was, I saw that the O&R turned orange. (laughs) And I was like, weird. I took (laughs) my towel, wiped it, and I'm like, my towel's orange. I'm like, looked at my pad. My orange pad is more orange orange than it should be. So To the inexperienced detailer who's never dealt with single stage before, Levi always loves pointing this out, the kind of, like, horror that goes over somebody's face the first time they do that. Yeah. And they're not yeah. familiar with how that works. You love working on single stage. Like, you it's like one of my cars. favorites. It's, it's, actually it's really it's... rewarding to work on because you start with that really chalky, yep. you know, like my Miata. Yep. When it was new, yep. it was just that pink. Yeah, it's fun. When it's if you've never touched single, <laughs> single stage paint, uh, when you do polish, the color returns the color it's, comes off and, and goes onto the pad really, but it's and like, it's freaky it's but, alarming and people go ha ah, what am i doing wrong well you're not doing anything wrong it actually that's, does that that's what your pads do mm-hmm. when you're working on a clear coated yeah, yeah. car you just they fill up with just the same amount much. of paint the difference is it's clear yeah instead of colored <laughs> yeah. um but with single stage there's a little more to work with Sometimes yeah. on older single stage, there's not mm-hmm. not but, as but much you can burn through. Big lesson here, though: wash stuff. your pads, folks. Yeah, but the wash the, the, the yeah. depth though that that orange got. I mean, after I polished, I basically what I ended up doing was um, on the blue. The blue was actually really soft. The clear on that on that paint was really really soft. And I was getting some micro marring, especially when I tried a test spot with a microfiber pad, and then I went to an orange pad, and I was still getting a little bit of micro marring with with the compound I was using and I was kind of scratching my head there wondering why that was still happening but then what I did is I followed up with a black pad with hyper polish and it was perfect I mean it was it's about as good as it was going to get. Yeah. So uh, I was really happy with how it all turned out. And it was a fun, I mean, it was fun to do, but at the same time, like my back is broken right now. <laughs> like I cannot, my back hurts so bad because this is such a wide car. It's and a when famously it's a low, low car. car. And, and it's <laughs> wide and low. So when you're leaning over, it's just not natural for your body to lean that type of way. So like my body was sore, you know, so that by the time I, I did, I finished the last, you know, touch of hyper seal. This, that's what I used for the, 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 I guess the protection on the car. Yeah. Time to invest um, in a creeper seat. I, well, I, well, or, I, I, or a rack I had, I, mean, I had like, my yeah, seat, like but, a rack attack, attack. Yeah. but yeah. I need, yeah, something else. But I looked back at it and I was like, man, this, this car looks really good. I felt really, it had that it's good, a cool car. Real, it's one of those ones that, feeling. yeah, but it was just a lot of work and, um, yeah, it was just, it was a lot of work, but I was just, one thing, it was just, I wasn't expecting to, I guess, come, or not come across that, that problem, because it wasn't a problem, it was just kind of one of those It's a challenge, interesting, a new interesting, interesting challenge. Interesting challenge that, you know, I basically needed to stay away from the vinyl, Yeah. but, you know, to, to the most, to the most <clears> I can, but that's the hard part, because there was still swirling up to the vinyl, and then the other problem is, too, is... For people who maybe you know, have not done this before, if you were to, if I were to take blue tape or a painter's tape and put that over yeah. vinyl, that may have also been really <laughs> bad as well. Up it comes. So because yeah. I could have either pulled that up or some of that vinyl could have lost its color once I pulled that tape up. Mm-hmm. It could have t- taken off some of the black. It could have taken off some of the white. Yeah. You know, and then you have an awkward lighter colored strip just going that, along. That the... that's and that's how it's going to be. And I can't yeah. you know, and I won't yeah. be able to fix that. So I had to really tackle it in a different way. And I used several different tools. I use the 21, I use the Porter cable, and I use the hybrid a ton. The little... I bet, yeah, when you're working near the edges of stuff, it's like, "Mm, I use that a lot more. Well, because they're also the body vents on the car. There's these deep vents. I'm talking like deep enough to where you can put your your arm arm 
yeah. down to your elbow. And yeah, they're not super wide, but they go back a long way. So that's where I ended up using the hybrid yeah. for digging deep back inside there and polishing that because, you know, the owner... Somebody's really, going to look in there with a light yeah. and you want to be ready. So. Well, the owner, he, he wanted every single thing polished and I said, okay, let's... But he's smart because you've kind of taught everything. him what to look for, and now he really I- expects to find that. So when he goes out and looks now, he's going to be able to be a little more critical yep. when looking at uh, examples that he may potentially yep. purchase in the future. But yeah. also know on future cars that he does buy, he may look at it and go, like, this is a negotiating tactic I can mm-hmm. use because I know I can have Anthony take care of it. Yeah. Yeah. Ex- so exactly. And it I may not be as big of a deal <clears throat> to him now, right. but it allows him a little more negotiating factor where he can go, yeah. like, you know... Yeah. And I told him like what's realistic and what's not realistic. Right. I mean that was like the biggest thing is letting him know what what can and can't be fixed on on paint jobs and and then what you put at risk, right? So for example, around the gas cap of the GT, there was a little area where the paint was was chipped and then there was some slight little marring there and there was a little bit of some scratches around the side there, almost like somebody put their hand around the gas tank when they were going to pumping and they scratched it with their hand or mm-hmm. they did something. And he asked me, okay, can you fix that around that around that gas tank area? And can you really polish and get all those out? And I kind of told him, a lot of these are really deep. If I were to attempt this, especially with this have, being clear coated and it burns through or I, it, the paint chips even more or something like that happens, especially around a gas cap area where you're getting fumes and all sorts of crap from Whole it. Whole host um, of new problems. It's, that's a lot more problems than you'd want because I say, if I were to try and really push through all the way you know, without a paint depth gauge on me at that time, if I were to burn through that, you're looking at a new paint job for this whole entire fender because they have to match this whole thing. And then now the paint is no longer original. And now the value this, of the car is on this one thousand mile car. Of that. So right. I kind of have to tell them, you know, what you can and can't do, and then you have to weigh out your options after that because it's not just some simple touch up thing. So, yeah. and this is why chasing absolute utter perfection all the time isn't necessarily no, the right answer. Nope. Yeah. No, yeah. because not, if you don't leave not. any for next time, then. Pff, yeah, you're it's, done. Yeah. Speaking of not leaving any for next time, you guys did a shoe cleaning video. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, it was, it was kind of for fun. Yeah. Well, the whole okay. It Anthony, was pretty. I, I would like to point yeah. out, Dane was really <clears throat> pumped on this. Shoe I was thing. really was pumped fun. to do a video because yeah. it had nothing to do with anything else we've no, done. No, and you knocked it out quick. And just I will yeah. hand it to you. It was just so. a simple little video. I mean, you're cleaning a shoe, right? So yeah. it's not a whole lot of surface area, but we wanted to make something that was just different, kind of fun, kind of, but also it's just kind of like a promo. It's like a hype video Yeah, yeah. for get excited to clean your shoes, it which was. not everybody would be, video. but in our mall in Boise, there's a guy, there are two yeah. guys that sit <clears throat> clean shoes, tennis shoes, and they've got, you know, their Walmart microfiber towels. And yeah. They scrub and clean shoes with their, and they're selling shoe cleaning products. Yeah, um, and where do they, they clean? I don't, I, I'm curious. You haven't seen them. Seen them? They're right oh. by the C's Candy and the uh, <laughs> other candy store. Place. Oh, oh, okay. actually, I do know where you're they're talking right about. There. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, but like, they, if you uh, care about your shoes and you want to make them last, cleaning them goes a long way. For a lot of shoes that you think are like dead, yeah, you can bring them back a lot. Well, of the and time. your eyebrid's got the brush attachment, so yeah, that, that's true. Well, like, well, yeah. Yeah. Your, well, your brother <clears throat> Corey, when he saw it, he was like, "I may just buy one of these just so I can clean my <laughs> shoes." Yeah, hey, and <laughs> you know, shoe shoe people, shoe guys, shoe ladies, when they get into their shoes, it's serious. Well, there's business. those sneaker people. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, oh, I, the, I, I, what are they call like, like sneaker like heads? That. Is that it? People. Like, I have yeah. no idea. But like, there's people on YouTube that like will collect. Thou- hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of shoes, thousands of dollars realistically. Jordans are just the tip of the but, iceberg. It but, goes down so far down I know, a rabbit I know hole. some people here locally, some guys that I know, some dudes that have a whole closet full of shoes, and they call them sneakers, and they say, you know, I like collecting sneakers and stuff like that. And I say, but so what do you wear these? And he's like, oh, oh. I'll, 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 <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll, I'll cycle through them. I might wear them one, you know, for mm-hmm. one day, you know, out of the year. And I ask them for like what, so like a, like a fancy outfit, or like what is this? For? It's like having a big garage, and then you just have your like ratty daily drivers, yeah. And then <laughs> the rest is well, yes, yeah. I it's, just... it just doesn't make sense to me. I'm like, like who is seeing you on this special occasion where you need to wear this this particular pair of shoes only <clears throat> for this one day? Because yeah. I I wear a pair of Vans every day between Vans and Nikes. That's yeah. and I wear the same 
pair. I just alternate. But like I buy one else. pair of tennis shoes. I have yeah. a pair of dress shoes, <laughs> and I have a pair that's like it. my boots, and that's it. People collect different uh, things, and for some, it is about the collecting. Yeah. For other people, they actually do wear them. I, mean, I can, I, I've and seen I can, that. I could too, see that. A collector's think, a collector. I think. Collector. I think some people I mean, actually people sell with too many cars. You know, too many. I mean. Yeah, it all depends on the person. It's yeah. not too many for some people. So. No, and like you know, my dad still continues to purchase vehicles. Yeah, and you know, uh, there are friends and family that see, and they're like, he can't, he doesn't get like half of them. He doesn't drive. Yeah, yeah, and it's well. It's okay, but he goes and buys another one, and people go, but he hasn't finished. <laughs> There's six of them that aren't even done well, yet, yeah, but he hasn't even finished. But he's buying more. <laughs> Why don't take that money and put it on? Get those cars going, but it's it's, it's their business yeah, what they do yep. with it. And that's it's a collector, totally fine. and that's just what they do. And so. this is once again just you know appreciating other people for for what they do, and it, maybe it's not your thing, but you can appreciate that somebody's an enthusiast for something. Yes, like, I heard stories about what the LeBaron Baron. That was a funny thing oh, where the yeah. guy just had <laughs> like twenty or thirty Chrysler LeBarons, <laughs> <laughs> and that was his whole thing. Was like every single Turbo year of them, and like the ones with the wood paneling, and yep, oh man, yep. like uh, from planes, Pilbara trains, and automobiles. Yeah. I had a buddy. I had a buddy, who had a, I had a buddy who had a Turbo <laughs> LeBaron. Oh man! Actually, the guy I went down to Vegas with. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Was that turbo. before or after the Ford uh, Escort? It was av- no, he wasn't the he wasn't the Escort driver. It was my oh, buddy it Justin, was a different guy. Okay, who works for Fa- Factor Fifty Five and, oh, and gotcha. has a Jeep. Um, <laughs> now that's what he was. Oh, he man. had a he the had a LeBaron. LeBaron. Yeah, turboed LeBaron. But it was to pretty each their own, for real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it is. Uh, it is. Uh, you know, when you've got. I mean, it is a collect. I guess. Yeah, it's just a yeah. collection. I just. I like collecting something that you can do. So, I, I guess uh, yeah. I don't know. It's hard to say. I I'm just yeah. not that guy. I mean, the shoes the shoes have shoes. the potential to be used, but is I that like person going to use them? Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. But th- then you look at it and like, well, okay, that person. It's not a zero sum game. Like that person got shoes, so someone else doesn't. It's well, for me. It's it's a okay. You collect these shoes, right? Shoes are shoes are meant to get dirty you are walking with these shoes on on ground that's not clean or anything like that maybe if you had a if you were collecting it doesn't something take that much to get white shoes dirty yeah, yeah. maybe like okay so you, you collect baseball cards right yeah. what's the worst that's going to happen to a baseball card right no, i accidentally nothing, tore you know it. You, or you might yeah if you're if it's not in a protective case or something like that but i mean you're not going to go take that out to a baseball game or some major thing where you're putting it through all this rigorous use you buy a pair of shoes like, how do you avoid, like, you know? Yeah, yeah you know. but then it goes right back to the people that don't want to drive their cars because they collect cars true. True, and they're yeah. like, you can't drive them. So, <clears throat> collectors are yeah. the same regardless of who they are, I guess. Like, because I like shoes, but I don't see the point in yeah. collecting a ton of shoes. But then you could flip that on me, and my wife says the same thing. Like, why do we have all these bicycles? And yeah, that's your you can't thing ride all of them. And I'm like, but much, they're so. but this one's really cool, and yeah. this one does this, and this yeah. one's like, you know. So yeah. I mean, I can under like I think that just goes back to anybody. You could do that with camera equipment. You could do that with home theater equipment, stereo equipment, yep. cars. My yeah. little my guy my little boy Augie's getting into the little blind bags and. Yeah, it's squishy. It's it's toys. good to be enthusiastic about something yeah. hobby wise. You know, yeah, just I used to be that way with little Hot Wheels to, cars when yeah. I was little. I think we all were. Oh yeah, Legos. I mean, who, who Legos. Hasn't had yeah. Legos oh at some my gosh, point, right? so I mean, many Legos. Yeah. Oh man, I miss. Them. I still have a lot of them. I still, Stepping I, on one I, sucks. I had so. my mom yeah. keep a lot of my Legos, and so <clears> I. <throat> Uh, she actually kept a lot of my toys. Like I'm oh. talking, like I had old like Transformer toys and old st- and like lots of old stuff. And she kept a lot of it. That's and, pretty impressive. And it's it's but it's like but she won't let me like touch it. Oh. Like it was one of those things. Like right when <laughs> this I, is right for your I, grandchildren. Like, right yeah. when I got into high school or whatever it was, she had taken all of my toys. And she, I mean, I still play with toys when I was in middle school. I just want to say that. But anyway, she <laughs> took all of my toys <laughs> and just put them up in an attic far, far, far away underneath tons and tons of different stuff yeah. and I haven't seen them yeah. since. So. Well, well, I, I, I'm going gonna to run into my office later. and grab something that oh. I thought of Anthony when I was in the dollar <clears throat> store. <laughs> oh, really? And okay. I didn't buy them for you, oh. but I oh. bought them okay. to show you and I'll hmm. show you guys. Um, therefore, I'm putting them in my office sir, so when my kids come yeah. and hang out, there's something for them, something to, for them to play with. But okay. I just, this popped in my head. Okay. Huh. But I got them at the dollar store. So. Oh, right on. 
All right, yeah. for our listeners, sorry, but yeah. if you're watching on YouTube, I guess you'll see whatever he's going to bring in with him. Yeah. You know, you hear about people who, like, collect, like, vintage toys and stuff, and if they have kids, those kids go and play with those toys, and the parents, like, freak out because the yeah. toys lose their value. <laughs> yeah. You took that doll out of the packaging, and the old joke about Okay, that, I, well, I want to yeah. say right now, okay, so this is this is kind of embarrassing. Hmm. So, you know, I, I was always into the trading cards as a kid. I'm, I'm among that generation. You know, oh, we're, right. We're, well, po- you've lately been we're, on a we're, kick we're, selling we're, some we're, cards. We're Pokemon cards, right? <laughs> There's Pokemon cards. We're there of was, that generation. There was Digimon cards. There was Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Okay, I'm back. Oh, Fast and the Furious. Well, yes, the what? Do- at the dollar store. <laughs> Seriously? Anthony collects a lot of the Fast and Furious <laughs> yes, uh, cars and things. And so I found Dom's Ice Charger mm, and uh, yeah. let these uh, 66 Corvette, the red one from the new ones, wow. from Fast 8. Yep. But they had the large, like the like the 164 scale. That's yeah. probably bigger than 64. Yeah. Um, but they had those. At the dollar store, and I was like, "That's crazy!" Holy crap! Yeah. So yeah, normally um, branded stuff like that, even if it's right, like, it's going to be more expensive than that. I so know. I was store very, fine. That's you know, not bad. I'm glad it said Fast and Furious instead yeah. of like Fast and Lurious. Or, <laughs> yeah. or uh, I mean, when you're in the dollar store, yeah. sometimes things take yeah. a weird, bizarro reality. Could say the yeah. nice, the nice <clears throat> changer instead of the ni- ice <laughs> charger on it. Could say yeah. that, but oh. I was amazed they had those, so I had to. I, I thought that's what up. you were going to call Transformers. Like, you get a yeah. Transformer doll, it's called the Nice Changer. <laughs> yeah, it's the Nice Changer. <laughs> but, let me just finish what I was saying here. Go for so it. So, basically, so, you know, the cards, the trading cards, right. Pokemon, yeah, right. there's, yep. there's Yu-Gi-Oh cards, right? For some reason, I got really, I got into Digimon cards as well. Digimon was, like, the opposite of what Pokemon, like, I was going to say, like, wow, you were one of the weird kids was, so who First off, I'm going to say, uh, I missed that whole generation Right, you were a little games. before that, yeah. so. Yeah. Like, my brother played it, he's the same age as you guys, and he got into it pretty hardcore. Yeah. But I missed that generation. In the 90s, yeah. I was like, prime into it, early 2000s, still pretty into it, but by, like, 2004... <laughs> It was getting a little long in the tooth. Yeah. It was time. I, d- I just don't know if we'll ever out. have that again. <laughs> but I, um, so I still actually, it's funny. I still have all my Yu-Gi-Oh cards, but I did stumble across a couple sleeves of Digimon cards, right? To where it was literally, I stumbled across them. Okay, <clears> I'm going <throat> to throw these out. But before I did that, I'm like, wait, be- see before I throw worth. them out. Let me, Anthony's let me just, got this thing where curious. if he can come up with a way to make a deal rather than throw yeah, something away. Then I'll do it. He'll so, find it. And people <laughs> Buy them. It blows my mind that people yeah. pay for these things. So still, I, uh, yeah, I, put, wow. I went on eBay and just Googled like, like <laughs> one of the cards that I had. I saw that one of the cards I had was worth $20. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to spend What's some What's better, zero or $20? I'm just, um. just going to spend some time. I'm going to put these all up on eBay and just and just <laughs> let them sit. If they sell, they sell. They don't. They, if they don't sell within the next month or two, I'll just toss them. It's not a big deal. Guys, I have made over four hundred dollars <laughs> selling, oh, it's selling weird, Digimon selling cards. Oh, Digimon cards. I sold one card for a hundred dollars, right? Holy crap. And I what? just I just just I've just been I, I think another couple cards went for fifty each, another car and a couple cards went for twenty something. And so and they cost nothing to ship out. So yeah. I just right. depending really on the age of our listeners right now, they're either digging through their own old binders or they're yeah. like rustling through their kids' stuff yeah. trying to find yeah. okay, where Holy is it? Cow. Come on, no. I know I got some in here. Uh. And they're really they weren't anything <laughs> super special, but I know Timmy, there's, we're there's selling still them. <laughs> people out there that are really into like collecting things like yeah. that. So yeah. I'm I'm just kinda waiting for a little bit more time to pass for me to, to put the Yu-Gi-Oh cards up for sale but I mean just, truthfully just, Pokemon I kind of understand that but Digimon was like I mean yeah it, people looked at it as like the knockoff niche, Pokemon but at the same know. time even in that realm like trading cards and stuff that was niche so the yeah. fact that anybody would be willing to pay for one more than like five bucks let alone a hundred yeah. that that just blows and these, my these mind are used I'm talking these are not mint cards these are cards right. I did put in sleeves <clears> but they were played with. I mean, I had them when I was eleven. I was I was out sure. playing, trading cards with my friends. So they all had they had wear on the edges. People don't or don't care. They're still buying them. So yeah, I think they I don't have, make I new I ones. So they don't. Uh, yeah. have four left to sell, and if those end up selling, I all have made. Oh, I think over five hundred bucks. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. All these cards Crazy. I was about to just throw out. Nice. So, so don't throw anything out. So guys, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. start digging through yeah. the closets Go at home. I know I got some like old stuff laying yeah. in there. Like I think I have a Howard or. 
Howland Bell projector for some reason, although those are worth like nothing, <laughs> like an eight millimeter reel to reel. I'll start, but, I'll start yeah. hawking all my yeah. stuff here on the podcast. I got old like movie film stuff. So yeah, it's yeah. a very niche. Yeah. What? So what podcast? What, so what else have you guys been listening to lately? Because okay. I know that I've watched a couple of videos that I want to talk about, and yeah. I don't know if you want to, no, jump absolutely. In. I know he's big on podcasts. I tend to stick to the same like handful of ones that I listen to, but I know you're always kind of exploring, finding new stuff. Yeah, I haven't done anything different this week. Mostly just trying trying to get rid of or get ready for uh, just SEMA. So I haven't had brain time to yeah. zone out on that stuff. So I'm still listening to lore. Um, okay. I'm yep. still watching lore on Amazon now. Um, if you guys haven't checked that out, it's pretty dope. Um, and then uh, the biggest thing, I've got to watch some CGM videos today hmm. on the how uh, the CGM is installed in my son, which is <laughs> yeah. weird. That's probably um, important to know. My wife sent me those this <laughs> like morning. Like how to connect to it via your smartphone. Basically, yeah. <laughs> how to basically put a computer chip on my son and then figure out how <laughs> your to Your kid is now it. a part of the internet how of things. How to it's... put him to sleep <laughs> and you're just like, this button makes very him strange. sleep. You're yeah. just in there, sleep mode, sleep mode, come yeah. on. Uh. But once we get all this data... <clears throat> and, a lo- uh, and it, like logged for the CGM, then we hook up his insulin pump. It will be yeah. the next thing, and then hopefully yeah. the CGM can learn how, or the pump can learn from the CGM. So this means no more uh, finger picks, right? Hopefully, well, it, instead of like five or six finger pricks a day, he'll get like the CGM installed once every three days or something. Mm. So Install- it's a lot. Like it'll get going. It'll go into his arm and it'll stay there oh, for like yeah. three days, and then we take it out and we put a new one in. And it oh, goes in another oh, spot okay. for three days so that there's always different sites. So it's like a little cartridge? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah, it's about the size of a thumbtack. So you need to simply just literally pull up like his shirt and look, like pull up his shirt and just oh, look at it? Yeah. That's not very big. Oh, okay. It's Well, the the sensor itself, the oh. needle itself is about that, is like the size yeah. of a thumbtack. Okay. But then the rest of it is about, you know, probably about an inch mm-hmm. uh, that sits on the surface and uh, it doesn't take up much. Each one's different. Okay. But yeah, you basically inject that, set that on there, and then it's hmm. taped on, held together by some derma tape that okay. uh, yeah. wraps over the whole thing. And you can get superhero style uh, derma cool. bands and stuff yeah. like that. So you can get them covered so that they've got oh, your kid actually flags. Wants to wear it, you know? Yeah, it just looks yeah. cool. Um, and that way it's, it seems a little different, but it's. It's definitely strange when I'm figuring out how to install yeah. a piece of equipment. There's <laughs> videos of parents doing them while they're asleep. Uh, okay. The kids are asleep, which is kind of crazy. And then, and then the same bionic with the, child. Same with the injection sites for the uh, pump to mm-hmm. where they install the tube and stuff. Like it's the same kind of thing. So it's kind of kind of wild. Um, hmm. But that's basically what this means: less finger pricks. Yep. Uh, and then the insulin pump will also allow uh, for less high and low. Um, dosing. So, yeah, you know, we went and had pizza this weekend. We had family in town. Pizza skyrocketed him. Ah, um, yeah. And so he was all over the map after dinner. That's um, rough. So it was n- not much sleep Saturday, Friday night for us because we were up every couple hours just checking his blood. Yeah, um, yeah. To see because if he goes too high, he enters into DKA, which is diabetic ketoacidosis, and if he goes too low, then uh, he can slip into a coma. So uh, yeah. just Neither monitoring monitoring his blood sugar every few hours just to make sure. And he was high, um, but we were hoping that it would get, it wouldn't keep climbing, that it would reach a certain point yeah, and then come level down. Because we didn't want it to keep going high because, again, you get the DKA, that's where your blood starts to create uh, acetone. And once the acetone reaches your organs, that's when it can start causing organ failure. So staying too high at yeah. staying in that level too long is not a good thing either. So yeah. Um, so this will all help with that. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, we try not to, it's not that he gets pizza every day. He gets pizza. Maybe I think he's had pizza twice in the last six months, which mm. is hard for a three year old. And that's like his favorite food. <sighs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> but you know, but however, little, touch to the Boise Fry Company. Hmm. We went and had burgers and fries, which again, so fries, ice cream, and pizza are the worst yeah. for spiking blood sugar because they they take so long yeah. to to get into your system. So mm-hmm. you could eat a slice of pizza at 6 o'clock, but it doesn't enter your bloodstream. The blood sh- Your blood sugar doesn't start processing it until 2 or 3 in the morning. Hmm. That's so, why I feel good all night. Yeah. Right? No, yeah. <laughs> so that's the hard thing because you can't, you have to dose for the food you're going to eat. Yeah. And if you dose and then it doesn't hit you till that, it's hard to calculate. So 
Anyway, so we did pizza this weekend, and then we did French fries. <laughs> yeah. They were great, great parents. Um, but <laughs> Boise Fry Company, we dosed him for the fries and the burger, mm-hmm. and he got a little burger, and everything's awesome. The Boise Fry Company is all natural. Everything's yeah. uh, awesome, and he was perfect all nice. night, Saturday night. It was it was amazing. We kept thinking, like, is he's going to spike? He's going to spike, and then we check his blood, and I'm like, Wow, that was great. Because that food's not processed. Because the food's not processed. It's all, yeah. So the, you know, McDonald's French fries (laughs) will spike him. Uh, Another Idaho product, by the way. Yeah, but any of the fast food (laughs) joints, fries will spike him. But we went to the Boise Fry Company and and had their burgers and their fries, and it didn't. And we were like, well, that was pretty sweet. It just adds an, you know. Another dimension of food we can't eat. A I little think, less so. stress, at least. Yeah, so exactly. That's nice. So that's all I've been doing. <clears throat> okay. And getting well, ready uh, for SEMA. So yeah. you've got so something you've been watching. So Anthony had some stuff he actually wanted to talk about. Oh, well, no. I was, yeah, so I was just saying, I watched a couple of videos that were really cool. Um, so uh, White Details, Jim yep. White, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. uploaded a new video. Ooh, I, and, I knew he was working on one. And, I didn't get to see it yet, though. He uploaded a, I think it's a 54-minute video. Is that the video. longest one Holy he's done cow. yet? That's like a, that's a, and it's a long vlog. So, like, I always, I always, like, give him props because that guy puts in a ton of ton video of time and, and effort into editing, into filming and and planning his shots and stuff like that. Like that's something on, on top of detailing I couldn't even imagine doing. Oh yeah, no. The and he that's, sets up he sets up his shots while he's working. Yeah. yeah. While and he's working on the car. Like I, that, it's, it's that's that's amazing. one big thing, and then then actually sitting down and going through all of the footage to put to, to pile together a video. I mean, like after at the you, end of the day, I mean after you're done working time, on a car, man. you don't want to think about that car anymore. <laughs> but then he goes back and makes these videos. And they're gorgeous, and yeah, and puts awesome de- like awesome detail work into them. He overlays these awesome tracks, and he, he'll change scenes with the different you know with the music and. Um, so I gotta give him props, but he uploaded a 54-minute video of him detailing three different cars. It was um, some AMG he was doing. He did an M2, and then he did um, an RS4, I believe it was, and so all black cars. And he did the whole process of the paint correction with all of them, and showing all the cool details that he always does, the before and afters, the 50/50 shots, and. Um, Really cool video. I, I always watch just to because he he'll he'll use our towels in, in in a few different videos, and so I always watch to see what towels he's using. And he, for some reason, <laughs> loves the Spectrum 420. <clears throat> That's his favorite. And 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 it's good. It's, it's a good towel. It's just yeah. it's just funny because we you know he has the Eagle. He has an assortment of our our, our finest towels. We've seen them in the videos, and and we think. When he, we see him use the Spectrum, he, that's like his go-to. That's his like plush, you know, favorite towel. And, yeah. And and it's just funny seeing everybody's different, um, I guess, favorites from our lineup. Yeah. And we always expect people to say the Eagle, the Pluffle, the Eagle, the Pluffle. You but know? I learned a long time ago it's, to like everybody's idea everybody's of what's different. best is different. Yeah. And that's why when somebody asks you, what's the best? And it's like, well, that it's, can mean a lot of things. Yeah. And they hate yeah. that answer because they just want an answer. They don't yeah. want... Well, if this, then this. But the reality is, like, if you're looking for something awesome on a budget, Spectrum and Creature, where it's at. If you're looking for, like, the end-all, be-all awesome, the Eagle finds its way into pretty much anybody's, yeah. you know, work. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's it's one of those deals where, yeah, there's there's conditions and stuff to be met. But, I, yeah, there's, there's no such thing as a, a wrong tool if it's what you feel best using in a given scenario, mm-hmm. and it yeah. works. Yeah. yeah. Then somebody else maybe doesn't like using it that way, like the glass towels. The glass towels are real love it or hate it kind of thing. Yeah, those are really ones. subjective too. Yeah. Like, because uh, well, <laughs> people may work. let you know it. Well, and that, and it's funny because customers will call and ask or they'll email and go, what's the best glass towel? <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like, boy, well, well, what kind of person are you? <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> are you the kind um, that's going to, like, you know, rant and rave when it doesn't you know immediately smoothly move across the glass well i had a customer i had a customer that emailed us this week and asked about uh they wanted a towel that didn't cause streaks okay and i said that has nothing to do with the towel yeah Mm -hmm. that has everything to do with your contamination level right and what products you're using to clean because if you're you can clean with the right window cleaner and the right towel but if you took that towel and you wiped it over let's say you dressed your dash yeah. And you've got a very oily dressing <clears throat> on there, <clears throat> and you set the towel on that oily dressing before you, as you were spraying mm-hmm. the product on, you've now transferred that oily residue 
to your towel, and now you're going to put it on your window, and you're going to clean the don't glass. Think about that. You could do the box method. You could do and then everything. They blame the product. And then they go, "Oh, this towel's just streaking yeah. like crazy." Well, it's not. It's never <laughs> the towel. It's the contamination that's in the towel. And so, at that point, it it doesn't matter what towel it is. You can use a 245. You can use a yeah. 365. You can use you can use a Minx. Yeah. It doesn't matter what the towel is. The st- the streaking is going to be caused by the contamination right? or yeah. the product that you're using. And I mean, I guess... So if, I wrote to the guy and just yeah. said, <clears throat> you need to make sure that you're doing everything that you can in your technique and you're, uh, you're watching your contamination control. Mm-hmm. But realistically, what type of towel do you like? And uh, some of our larger customers, I've s- just, when they've put a big order in, yeah, they've asked, hey we're looking to want to buy some glass towels. If they're buying a very, very large order, I have no problem adding a few glass towels for them to try mm-hmm. and test. It's an acquired taste. Right, I mean, yeah, but it's, it's when they're purchasing, everybody. when they're buying a lot of, like they'll buy a case or two cases of towels for the shop, I'll throw in three or four glass towels and go try these first, then see, because they're going to make that purchase. They want to find the right towel because I know they're going to buy bulk and they're going to buy a case quantity of those towels. So I want to make sure that they're spending their money wisely. For the customers that are just wanting to learn about glass towels, our glass towels are very inexpensive. You guys can pick those up. You can pick up all five for under 20 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. And get get a couple more fun towels that you know you're going to get to bump you you over the 50 bucks free shipping and go at it and do that demo and do that test. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll tell you right now, the waffle weave, the Chinese waffle weave in the 1616 is probably the best bang for your buck. Glass as far towel. as an all-around towel to use on glass, waffle yeah. weave is pretty yeah. much And it's like a dollar. Foolproof. It's like a dollar f- yeah. something for the uh, waffle weave. So get that. Use that. Um, if you want the best glass towel, then you get the FTW. Yeah. You pay $6 for that towel. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's you also know. the most absorbent glass towel yeah. out of all of them. Because that twist pile is just. But then I've got tons of guys who are like, "Oh, the Drago is awesome for glass." Yeah. Okay, so that's just a standard <laughs> 365. Is yeah. what that is. Yeah. So, so you could use a premium, all-purpose microfiber Terry, which is a 365 with an overlock stitch. You could use an edgeless 365. Same thing as the, the Drago is just the one with the suede border. Right, but you can so. use any of those towels. But they're all basically right. the same towel. It's yep. just different versions. Yeah. And once so again, everybody's different. different strokes for different folks. So Which is why we have so many towels. Yeah, and yeah, for, <laughs> for those who, who get hung up, oh, why do you have so many options? I can't process all that. And it's like, well, that's because they're not all for you. They're for lots of different people. Yeah. So mm-hmm. we will guide you the way that you explain to what you're – experiences and we'll guide you the right direction yeah and you yeah. can call us anytime uh you call the the number on the website is the number for here and yeah. we all answer the phones here so yeah even if you want one of us just ask you ask for, for a specific and, person though yeah yep. yep. and we'll get the phone call and we can help you guys out so yeah uh, mm-hmm. anything else gentlemen dane what have you been watching mm. or listening to well, you know, I, I listen to my basic, you know, car podcast. I love the Smoking Tire podcast. I love Hooniverse. Um, yeah, all that basic stuff. It's always fun just to kind of keep up on it when you're doing your morning commute. You know, yeah, you can have your music or you can actually listen to something that changes every day. So if you yeah. have shows that are regularly updated, it's a good way to go. I like yeah. it. One that I really like, though, that I guess is a little more popular because car stuff can tend to be kind of niche. So the audience is kind of smaller, but. One that I think everybody likes is just like music in general. And I was telling you the other day, it, it's most people know this podcast by now, so I'm sure to a lot of people are like, oh, well, I knew about that one. But Song Exploder, if you've never, hmm. never listened to Song Exploder, that's a really cool podcast. Whether you're into the kind of music the episode happens to be about or not, it's basically this guy, he, uh, he interviews the artist and they break down a song into its like components And then they assemble it together and explain why they made that note or that Mm -hmm. instrument and that sound. And they they layer it up until finally at the end they play the whole song for you. Oh, wow. And it's it's kind of cool because then you gather gather, gather a new appreciation for, you know, any given song and stuff. But, uh, no, there's some some cool ones like, uh, oh, man. Well, okay, like Young Folks, uh, Peter Bjorn trying to remember um it's the whistle song everybody knows the whistle song okay. yeah yep yep i know the whistle song 
Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That one, Wait, they break it down. That's and it's a different whistle awesome. song. I was thinking of the No, song. no, no. That's a different whistle song. No, 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 no. <laughs> different song. Yeah, no. But uh, way off. <clears throat> yeah, no. So yeah, ones like that. But you know, <laughs> they get all kinds of people on there, whether it's like pop or electronic or country. They do all kinds of stuff. So it's just, it's a cool one. I, yeah. I like that one because you end up learning something each time. So for yeah. those who are curious, I, I highly recommend that. Yeah, no, I think that. I think I think that podcasts. I think listening to them, it, it gives people, you know, a, a, something something new to listen to. Like you said, it kind of keeps things. It's always changing. Like I'll find myself listening to the same songs on my commute, over and over again. And 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 whereas a podcast, I can get some new information. Or you know, Levi likes listening to uh, in what is it, NPR, right? NPR, NPR, yeah. NPR. So Anthony for uh, NPR. uh what do we kind of do? Kind of like Field a track, trip. a track run down the track to <laughs> we did down, to the, down to the Walmart in the Elantra. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, we did. Yeah, he 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 was pretty. We got to do a watch Wednesday with your Elantra. Well, we got it. We got in, and, and it was, and I was like, oh yeah, no, you know, it's just I, let me turn down my MPR. See the handle yeah. over there. You so better was, be holding it. I was listening to NPR. <laughs> put, on, put on your harness. Your, yeah, your yeah. Your was, Takata harness and put on that. Yeah, helmet. I handed him his helmet, and we were right, ready to go. Ready to get like, crazy. We're gonna drive like three blocks down the road <laughs> yeah. to Walmart. So no. Get ready. Well, I'm going to start li- – because I, I, basically my main reason why I didn't listen to a lot of podcasts when I'm on the road and stuff like that is because of uh, – I'm still one of those guys that's on a data plan. I don't have oh, that – un- yeah. I'm not I'm not living that unlimited data <sighs> life like, a, that lot, like a lot of the other people. So <clears> I was actually – so so something for maybe the listeners too that they can maybe put into their daily lives. Hmm. One thing you need to understand is that if you are on a data plan still or whoever you're with – I was on – I'm still on Verizon – they, you could, how do I, how can I see this? You could be on an old phone plan yeah. from, from years ago if you don't check back. So I found out that when I called over the weekend that I was on some six gigabyte shared plan between my family. Uh, and I've been on that plan for the past, I think like four years, like three or four years. Like me and my family have been only sharing <laughs> six gigs of data That's for insane. this. For my this. parents called me about one I had for ten years, and mine had been just unchanged. It was like one of the early and limited plans. Yeah, and they took it away for a long time. But I was grandfathered in on everything, and then my folks are basically like, "Well, you know." you could just update to the newer thing and then it'd be a whole lot cheaper. It's like, what newer thing? And then you find out, yeah, it's, they, they changed everything. And yeah. No, well, that's, well, that's, that's what happened. Now with so my I, new phone, I, it I, actually, you know, won't I called and asked him, like, bill. so I've been on a six gigabyte plan with my family and, and nobody has changed the plan. They're like, no, sir, you know, like, you know, you, that won't <clears> change <throat> unless you, you request for it to be changed. And I'm like, all right, so... What is the is so is the six gigabyte even a thing anymore? And they're like, no, that's no longer a thing. <laughs> that hardly and like, covers. <laughs> and I'm like, then why am I then why am I still on this thing that doesn't didn't even ask. E- exist? Yeah. So I said, what is everybody on now? And she said, oh, everybody's on either the eight gigabyte plan, the sixteen gigabyte plan, and then the unlimited plan. And so she kind of gave me the rundown of the numbers. And go figure, I, I, we're paying the same as, you know, like an eight gigabyte plan, but we're only getting the six <laughs> gigs. So I kind of was, I was kind of mad and I told her, I'm like, that's kind of frustrating. And she was like, how about this, sir? How about I'll give you your own special plan called the customer loyalty plan. And and I'll give you 10 gigabytes of shared, you know, monthly da- uh, data. For, I really thought she was going to take a different direction. <laughs> for she's like, she's like, for the same price as you're paying now. So I'm like, so I'll get an additional, you know, four gigs of data for the same price without doing anything. All literally just from me calling you know and she said yeah pretty much and we i'm like wow yeah. i'm like all right. i'm like i've been literally sitting here trying to conserve any bit of data i can from month to month for the past four years and all i had to do was call so well, if you with guys those are on, bigger companies and corporations you find that a lot of stuff is negotiable <laughs> if you're yeah. just willing to put up with well my yes on the yeah, back end well we did unlimited my wife and i were on an unlimited plan but we were on an old <laughs> grandfather plan through sprint and then sprint decided to not to forego their unlimited plans. Yeah. So when we went to get new phones, they basically said, well, we're going to put you in a new plan that's not unlimited. And I said, no, nah, I'm not dealing yeah. with that. So uh, we went to T-Mobile to go unlimited with T-Mobile. And now the big thing is Sprint and T-Mobile are looking at uh, joining up. Yeah. And merging. Yeah. And they're talking about that after the first of the year, possibly. Ooh. Yeah. Having those two merge. Um, so uh, Sprint Mobile is what it's going to be yeah. called. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it'll be. Uh, so it's kind of like, oh man, 
So but, yeah. it's always good to check. I, that's that's kind of what I wanted to get 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 by this is that like if you're on a data plan or if you've been on a data plan, and, and if I'm not the only one, um, like give 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 your company a call and ask them what's what's relevant and what's what's what are people on yeah. nowadays? Because I mean, go figure. I was on something from four years ago and I had no idea because my family was just complacent with with keeping that six gigabyte plan. Yeah. And then I got four more gigs for free by literally just calling. Yeah. And, and so. I used my phone as my shop <clears throat> phone originally. Yeah. So because of that, I went unlimited everything when I signed mm-hmm. up for it. Yeah. Was so that I, because I was like, this is going to be my business phone yeah. for work and answering customers and sending emails. and. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, and I, I realize like some people listening are like, wait, you're still on your parents' plan? Like These boys are young and, it's and like, I'm old. Well, like, <laughs> to, to put it in perspective, I, I pay my part of the bill, but same, it's just easier having it. Yeah. It's just easier having them have it because we all live in the same town. The area code, all that stuff, not an issue. But yeah. like, okay, fine. If you live somewhere very far away yeah. from your family, I get it. You have your own well, plan. Well, see, That's and I'm fine, the opposite. I'm just you taking are... advantage of the situation because yeah. I'm on a family plan, but it's really just me. Well, it's the best thing. way to go because well, you, you guys, save so much yeah. more money. You like, guys are on a family plan with your folks. Yeah. I have added my mother-in-law to our plan. Yeah. It's so. just... The go. smarter way it's, to go. It's one way or the other, yeah. basically. Just a little differently. Like, and that's why I had a plan that was yeah. 10 plus years old. And they're like, the guy looked at it when I got my, I mentioned the other pocket, I got this new phone. The guy looked at it and he goes, oh, there's something weird. And it's like, he goes, oh, this is all like the old style paperwork. And he's like, man, I don't even remember seeing this. They like trained us for about this stuff, but I never actually seen <laughs> right, it. <yeah. laughs> it's like, oh man, am I just really messing well, up your yeah. day here? And he's like, no, no, it's okay. I can figure it out. I just really don't like these. Yeah. <laughs> it's, oh, Oh, okay. No, I just, I just don't. I'm just not big on like, for example, like phone plans, internet plans, things like that. It just everything is so. I, you just don't really know what's happening, especially when you choose like the auto pay features. You know, all these extra fees. Where I'm like, what's this fee? Why is, why is that? Why yeah. is that a thing? And people, they're like, oh, that's just part of the plan. If I'm you like, don't pay I'm attention, like, they will sneak things. Yeah, so oh, yeah. they'll sneak in these fees. Like for example, CenturyLink. I'm not going to get started uh, on okay. them. I, I, I have a lot of words to say about them too because they <laughs> jacked up my though. bill. We're at the end of the podcast. We yeah, we are, so. we are going places. We need to end. We, this. we don't, we don't want to throw anybody under the bus. But oh man, they. They made life tough yeah. <laughs> for a while there. Especially they, here. Uh-huh. They made yeah. life just, tough. Okay, I'll so. just say right now, I am still waiting on a $60 prepaid gift card from them um, since last since it. last December. <laughs> I've been waiting. And they told, and I've, every time I've called them, oh, sir, that's on its way. And I'm like, I don't believe you people. There's <laughs> the nothing, check is in the mail, man. That joke's old. on yeah. its okay, way. Yeah. And, dude, so I'm just, I just gave up on them. I'm, I'm uh-huh. so... But that's I have funny. to have them, so <sighs> yeah. yeah. It is so, what it is. and I guess that's it. You know, yeah. we're all feeling the crunch. We got a lot of SEMA stuff to attend We've to still. still. Got work to do. As mentioned, he's got his giant list, uh, yeah. and yeah, that applies to all of us. It's, it's not just yeah. his list; it's our yeah. list. Yeah, so we got to get on that. But anyway, we wanted to give you guys a chance to at least you know hear our thoughts and talk about phone plans for a little bit. Follow you us. Never this know week. where this podcast is Follow us is this go. week, uh, Friday. We are yep. going to be leaving for for Vegas. Uh, so follow all our live feeds, yeah, follow we'll our Instagrams, follow our Facebooks. Yeah, provided there's a signal. <laughs> um, check us out uh, and just follow us down there. We're excited. Um, it's these guys' first time at SEMA. Uh, well, this so is the I'm really, first time yeah, at SEMA. But it's SEMA the company's booth, first as time company, as an exhibitor so, yeah. at SEMA. You know, Jeff and I were down there last year. So we're really excited to, you know, just kind of, it's kind of an inaugural trip. Yeah. So Come see us. Um, we've had a lot of fun on our road trips this year. Um, so <laughs> why not film it this time and enjoy it yeah. and just kind of have fun with everybody. It's so. going to be a long one. So. Yeah. And I mean, there's all of us going, so that makes it even yeah. fun. Yeah, it's going to be fun. So <laughs> it's yeah, going to be a full we'll, we'll keep you guys updated here. In yep. The, in and the, the uh, scavenger hunt, we were going to, we're going to post that stuff. If you're going to be at SEMA yep. and you want to participate in our scavenger hunt, uh, we changed it. It's not a work shirt anymore. You're going to get a hat and a rag company t-shirt. You're um, get two things, not so just you get, one. So you get two items. You get a rag company shirt and a hat. Uh, that is the prize to complete the scavenger hunt. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I was going to say, do you remember our booth number? I do. I have to look it up. But again, uh, we're going to post the scavenger hunt rules and things on our Facebook and our Instagram page. Um, so if you guys are going to be looking for it, uh, that's where it's going to be. Yeah, we'll uh, be out in the performance pavilion. So we'll here. be kind of near like Mini and BMW. Just basically follow outside to where the tent is and the screeching tires and all that stuff. We'll yeah, be and I think it's out that way. 
it's not pulling up at the moment, but I think it's 52032 is our booth space. Okay. Uh, yeah, I want to make sure I get that right for folks so I can post it up. I'll post it up on the screen here once we got it confirmed. Yep, yeah. And you'll be able to see it there. But just, you know, put that one in your memory bank so when you're down there, assuming you do go to SEMA, come check us out. Come say hi. Absolutely, uh, you know, yeah. chat up a storm with these guys. Yeah, That's exactly. what we're there come for. See us. So, yeah. Have some fun. Yeah. Um, shoot so, yeah. some selfies, you know, whatever. So Make sure you uh, subscribe, leave a review on iTunes yep. about the podcast. Tell a friend or family member uh, about us and uh, Dane. And like this YouTube video if you're watching on YouTube. Yep. Yep. And All it's right. just not three dudes talking about yeah. towels. The whole no, time. we I'm talked about phone plans. plans. <laughs> we talked about Digimon cards. This goes making, making all that money over on the Digimon. Place. We talked about Fast and Furious cards. <laughs> we talked yeah. about you know, talked sugar about, highs. I mean, and, all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Diabetes so, stuff. Yeah. And, oh, you never like know what stuff. you're going to get. It's crazy. It's life, man. It's life. All right. Well, with that. Just want to say thank you for watching and or listening, and we will catch you in the next one, or we'll catch you face-to-face at SEMA. Yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Adios. See ya.